Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. How are we? How are we doing, <laughs> class? Good, Fine, thank thanks, you. Mr. Potter. Mr. Good morning, Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour, la class. Did bon. your French teacher used to say that? Well, you said, bonjour, ça va? And then we go, ça va bien, merci, et vous? Et vous? <laughs> Isn't it a two? Well, well, depends how well, pally you are with your teacher. Yeah. Yeah. What did you call me? <laughs> uh, this is a video game podcast where each and every week we talk about video game stuff. Welcome back, by the way, Peter, yeah. to the podcast. Oh, cheers. No it's plops this week. No, it's good to be back. It's good to have him back. <laughs> He's already exhausted. I'm glad I am to be back, back at work. He's rubbing his eyes. Yeah. He's having a fantastic time. Um, this is a video game podcast each and every week. We're sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor. I have the ad read in front of me right here. Uh, this week, in light of the Embracer Group's purchase of a few of Square Enix's studios, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of chatter has has uh, has been going around about what kind of games we could see. Maybe some old franchises revived, maybe some new spins or, or takes on uh, on, on existing formats. And with that in mind, I am thrilled to announce that finally the world is ready for Lara Croft's Tomb Raider, the new kart racer, coming from uh, Crystal Dynamics. I would cool. play that. Me, I think I would too. I will, in fact, I want to play like a, uh, a crossover multi-character hmm. Square Enix IDOS Crystal Dynamics umbrella game. Yeah. So it's not yeah. just Lara Croft, it's also... You know, Razael from Soul Reaver. <laughs> yes. And other characters too. And that's it. That's, that's the, the, only yeah, one. the only two. Uh, there's a handful of Avengers in there, but nobody plays as them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, you know, the other games. There's a Guardian, a Guardian the of the one. Galaxy. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. Maybe all, four, all, all, Guardian. all five of them are crammed into a cart together. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, maybe. Who, who knows? But yeah, uh, Lara Croft's Tomb Raider coming real soon, probably. Mm -hmm. What kind of maps have we got? Uh, cave ones, jungle ones. Um, Maybe a like some sort of around a tiger big abandoned one. boat. Uh, yeah, yeah. there's some, some tiger. tiger. There's a dinosaur one. Mm. Uh, Is that like a rainbow road kind of one? No. Oh, okay, it's rubbish. No, unfortunately not. There's yeah. no rainbow road one. But it's illegal, no. Ashton. You can't just copy rainbow road in your in, in no. someone else's car race. Well, no. give it a new name. Someone should what tell it every it? other game. Spectrum Street. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. yeah. Thanks. We've got we've got any yeah. other ones? Um. Glass path. Glass path. Yeah, because it's kind of, isn't it, made of glass, really? Glassy, isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, Anything from you? Prison patrol. I don't okay, know. That's a good one. It's not very good. Prison parade. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, because mm. patrol sounds like you're looking for prisms. Maybe I am. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what's going on. Look, anything could happen in Lara Croft's Tomb Raider. Okay? Chromatic crescent. Okay, all right. Now that's we're getting good. fancy with yeah. it. Mm. Now we're getting real fancy. We got that uh, thesaurus busted out. Yeah. It's another word for rainbow. Sun. Gay Street. Gay Street. Gay Street. <laughs> Ashton. That would work, yeah. Sure. Well, unfortunately, Tomb Raider's not real. Aww. But I wouldn't be surprised if Lara Croft <sighs> does show up in a kart racer at some point. She's probably already been in one, to be honest. Yeah, yeah she's but she's not, not really known one. for driving cars, is she? No, no, she never. you never see her behind some sort of Jeep with no... She no drove a quad bike roof. in Tomb Raider 3, I think, okay. certainly around the, the manor and presumably then on a mission in the game. She ever been on a jet ski? She seems like she might She's have been, been on a, a speed jet boat. ski. Okay. Mm. She's probably also been in a jet ski. She's been in a lot of planes and helicopters that have crashed. Yeah, yeah but she, she has. hasn't been flying those probably. No. Right? No. There's someone else so. who did that. She anyway, has driven, it's... in fact, in Team Raider Underworld, I think she drove. Okay, it, right. She? Well, then, yes, she can drive, but Possibly. not not in this game because it's not real. She probably can't because she's a woman. Well, there's that too. Wow, well, you're really just you said it. Sm smacking it out of the park, aren't you? Five <laughs> minutes in. <laughs> Uh, no, we are sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash forward slash team triple jump where for as little as one dollar you can submit questions to this podcast we have loads of other tiers available though please do consider going and supporting us uh, there if you aren't already mm. there is one other thing that we need to promote though isn't there <laughs> there is one little cheeky thing good tidings of great joy <laughs> We did it! We did it, everyone! We, did it! we hit 10,000 <laughs> follows on Facebook. We finally did it. Thank you so much to all of you who've done that. 
uh, and got us over that line. The next goal for us is to get some ungodly number of minutes of Ugh. watch time. So you may see occasional live streams of just sort of legacy content or we're uploading more videos and things like that yeah. you don't we're not going to pester you every week to engage with them but just be aware that they are there and we're trying to hit a milestone within 60 days in order to get full monetization so if you see them there maybe just open them in another tab and put them on mute because it still counts yeah, so streaming you don't stream. you don't have to on facebook and we're not going to we promised we'd not we would leave you alone when we got to 10,000 yeah. followers and we will but that is the next thing that we need to overcome internally. So if you see those, maybe just, uh, you know, try not to get too cross that there's a billion live streams happening on there and uh, and just tune in. Well, and it might be that when we get maybe sort of mid midway through, maybe we get to like day 30 and it's looking like we're less than halfway there. Maybe then yeah. we'll start panicking. Maybe then, say, please, maybe then you we'll you. just open some live You've got streams. at least a month <laughs> though where we're, yeah. not, where we're not gonna bother you apart from this week. Yeah. yeah. So you've got three weeks mm. where we'll leave you alone. Yeah. And then it's then it's full panic mode. Potentially, uh, Potentially where, yeah. where we could have it taken away so uh yeah thank you again mm. for getting us to that point facebook.com forward slash team triple jump i mean the week's already ruined in terms of not pestering them so we might as well say the link again yeah um, why not go follow it if you haven't already we got about seven months worth of videos where we're shouting about it so more people might trickle in mm. over time That'd but thank you again for all your support thank you, thank you so much i've got a question here from shane studer Possibly Studer. St Studer of the game. Studer. Uh, hello, Bap. When Overwatch was about to release, there was another game called Battleborn that was releasing about a week earlier. Mm. Both games were very similar in many ways, at least from the trailers. And I ended up going with Battleborn, which was definitely not the right move and was one of the worst games ever. Oof. Or just worse than most, perhaps. Poor, poor Gearbox. Is there any games you bought over another that were similar and found out you made the wrong choice. Thanks, Shane. Thank you, Thanks, Shane. Shane. Um, I, my an answer only sort of partially counts here, but I think uh, it's still it's still warranted, uh, which is that I played, um, uh, oh, actually, I was going to say Dishonored, but that's not the name of it. Basically, I didn't play Infamous, you know, like Infamous yes. Second Son. What was the one? Prototype. Prototype. I played Prototype. They came out at the same time. There they was came a lot out at the of same comparison. time, and they were very similar games. They were sort of like edgy superhero, anti-hero yeah. uh, games where you could fly and like get powers and stuff. It was like, um, what was that Will Smith superhero thing called? Hancock. I, Hancock. It was a bit yeah. like that. Yeah, the alcoholic superhero yeah. Hancock. Um, and I ended up uh, playing Prototype because I think... Were they both exclusive to each other's to their own consoles? No, or prototype, prototype was, was yes. Prototype was multi-platform. Um, infamous, infamous was Sucker Punch, who have gone on to do uh, Ghost of Tsushima, yeah. and also mm. did <laughs> Sly Cooper. So my answer only kind of counts in that I didn't really have access to Infamous because I didn't have a, a PS3 at the time. But the fact is, I ended up playing Prototype, and I saw other people playing Infamous, and I thought Prototype was a bit lacking really like it was fun for a bit when you had all these powers and you can go and like smash up the city and stuff and then you would very very quickly realize kind of done it all and all the missions were kind of similar it was that same issue that i've said before plagues the um the campaign of battlefront 2 where like you can just see the component like logic parts that mm. go together to make missions like mm. defend this area kill this number of people uh, play cutscene. Yeah. Do a get, go to new area. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It was yeah. just very like, you know, you could just see the individual bricks of like how to, how they made their, their missions. So it wasn't that good. It's interesting to hear you say that because as someone who was on the PS3 and did have Infamous and loved Infamous, mm. I always had that opinion of Prototype that it looked kind of lackluster and a bit yeah. boring. But there are, so, I've heard so many outspoken people who swear that prototype is just like God's gift really? to superhero <laughs> games. It's yeah, like and I never connected with that because, you know, why Why would you have burgers when you have steak at home? Yeah, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Infamous had its problems, but I really enjoyed Infamous. It's very good. Yeah, prototype definitely. I think I enjoyed it at first and then just the more it looks really I fun. played it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. And then you realize, oh, I've done all the fun things now. And I've still got hours of campaign left. Mm. And it's a bit too gritty as well. It's just a bit depressing. So, <laughs> yeah. It just made me sad. I yeah. wanted to play Spyro again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Ashton. Um, I don't have a, like, 
a pair of games that I bought one or the other, but a kind of a something that I have never quite forgiven my cousin for. I had a cousin when I was little. He's still alive. I still have <laughs> I had a cousin. Um, Past tense. That he was like really into games and he would like sit in his room whenever we went to see him and like not talk to any of us and just play his games. And I was like this little 10 year old being like, I want to hang out with my cousin. And also I kind of like video games and I don't have any. So I'm going to go see what this is all about. And I watched him play a game and I think, I don't know what game it was. I think it might have been an Assassin's Creed or something. I can't really remember. Um, but I was like, this game looks really fun. And I was watching him play and I was like, I really want this game. Like I really want it. But I didn't know the name of it. And my dad would ask me like, what game is it? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like got like uh, there was a it was like you hit people and you were like climbing buildings and like you're wearing these big pajamas. You're wearing these big pajamas. And he was like, right, okay. We'll see what we can find. And um, we'd we just got a PS2 and we had like maybe one or two games on it. And like it was the very end of like the PS2 era. So there was not a lot that we had left. Right. But um, my dad bought a game. And again, I don't know the game. I was looking today, like trying to find the game. Like I remember him playing. And he was like, is it this game? And it was a first person like Trojan or like Spartan game that you were like going through this like, forest after a big battle and and something and i cannot for the life of me remember what this game is mm. i'm going home next weekend and i might see if i can still find any of the ps2 games okay. that he's got and i might see if i can find out what game it is but At scrambled ashton if you have any yeah ideas. i will i'll tweet about it but i can't i can't remember what this game is i remember playing it and being like this isn't the game and i was like i don't think this is the game i was talking about and i didn't play very much of it because it was a bit too gruesome for me at like 10 and i was like i this is not right, the right game. And my dad was like, okay, well, what is the right game? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what the right game is. Ask my cousin. Ask, Ask my him. cousin. But um, I never did figure out what game he was playing. So I never did get to experience it. It I may have know. been Assassin's Creed, but it may not have been. Yeah. Game. I'm intrigued by the first person. I'm going to figure out what like, it is. Like Roman game. Because I can think there was, there was a couple. I had one, a PS2 uh, game that was third person. It was like, uh, like, Sparta, son of Rome, or something. Mm. Well, that doesn't make sense because Sparta is no, not it doesn't. Rome, no. <laughs> it's something like that kind of title. Yeah. yeah. Um, but well, Rise, son of Rome was the bad yes. Xbox uh, One launch title. Yeah, right. No, it wasn't Rise. Yeah, but it was yeah, son of Sparta Troy, or something. T- Troy, something or other. That's yeah, so maybe. Uh, yeah. I think it was a Conan game as well mm. on uh, PS2. But I'm going to figure out what it was. But man, I have no idea. But it's so like it's such a blurry memory of like what game is this? And I was googling it, today being like Roman game PS2, and looking through all the pictures, I was like, no, none of these are quite correct. Mm. So I'll find out what it was if we've still got it. If he's not like giving it away to see yet, you should do a stream on it. Yeah, if I can find it. Go on, it. Uh, if you can't find out, if your dad can't find out what it is, and the audience can't help, uh, you need to go to r slash tip of my joystick. Are you aware of this mm-hmm. subreddit? Is it? Okay. So there's one called Tip of My Tongue, where yeah. you just describe like what's this film or what's this word that I'm mm. trying to think of yeah. or whatever. And then they made a specific one for video games where you just say like the platform, the year, any information you can remember. People try and work and it out. People usually do work it Such out. Such a sexually charged it name is. for a subreddit. Yeah. Mm. If I was going to stream a game that I, I had on PlayStation 2, it would be... Um, the golden compass because that game was really hard when i was younger and i never got past the bit it was like a polar bear bit and i couldn't get past it so maybe now i'll be able to get past it all i remember about the film is they rip off the polar bear's head don't they or something oh my god yeah and they kill like they kill a child sick wow that's so cool was that a uh one of those early tt games before they did lego is it you know like that was yeah i don't know if it was narnia Narnia but certainly the film i remember that that i was oh and maybe it was the polar bear's jaw just gets like ripped oh yeah a polar bear like kills him and like rips his jaw off it's yeah, quite it's, a gruesome it's movie it's really gruesome wow. yeah. and then and the polar bear has like so the people have like familiars as animals mm, yeah. and the polar bear gets jealous so he has like a child as his familiar that he oh. just holds in his hand and is like just kind of mm. wafting this kid around who's, wafting who's clearly like very unwell see I read the first book but I think the golden compass is like the first two or something mm. like amalgamated and I don't yeah. know where it goes after the first one That's it's kind of weird, weird. Mm. anyway mm. do you have an answer to this question <laughs> I do actually yes so my friend got an Xbox 360 we were all on um, we all had like PS2s in my friendship group at school 
and then uh, most of us were waiting for the PS3, but he got the 360 and he played Oblivion. And I went to his house and saw him play Oblivion. Mm. And it was the most incredible game that I'd ever seen. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I remember being absolutely blown away that he was just walking down this hill and like picking up various plants. Mm. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? This is unbelievable. You can look at the plants in this game. I remember watching my uncle go into a room and he just picked like a fruit off a plate. Mm. And I'd never seen that in a game before. Like normally, yeah. plate or fruit is like a static asset mm. on a table. And then like an individual strawberry and then the others just fall down. It's yeah. like shocking. God. Yeah. So it blew my mind. And this this was either at the point where the PS3 wasn't out yet, or it was at the point where the PS3 was out, but the Oblivion port wasn't out uh, right. for PS3. And so I spent a good while basically chasing that high, trying to fly. I played a lot and bought a lot of really horrible uh, Western fantasy RPGs uh, <laughs> from Game Station and Game, based on a very limited budget. So mm. basically, whatever I could afford. And one in particular I got for PSP uh, was called Untold Legends: Brotherhood of the Blade. Now there have been a couple of uh, launch title uh, Untold Legend games, and they are almost uniformly dreadful. Right. Like they're just Good. awful dungeon crawler, sort of isometric view, Diablo style mm -hmm. games. And they're, they're just crap. And this, I played this PSP one for so long because another thing that blew my mind about Oblivion is that you could just like wear different bits of armor and it would appear on your person mm. and that was really cool. And so I was going through and picking up loot and equipping different armor for, for, my, for my guy and it was just rubbish. And that was <laughs> the point in my life as well where everyone goes through it as well. And some people, tragically, and they need our help as adults do the same thing. Uh, where they have no concept of really what a good game or a bad game is. They just sort of, mm. they they just think, this is a game, I will play it until I finish it or get bored of mm. it. Or even if it's really good, until I get bored of it or the next thing comes along because that's just how they consume video games. Yeah. And that's certainly how I consumed games as a child with no concept of what was good and what was bad. It was just play it until I get bored of it or until the next thing comes along. And I played probably too much of this, uh, <laughs> but then eventually just gave up on it. But even then, I knew this game isn't very good. It's not Oblivion, mm -hmm. is it? It's just not Oblivion. So, uh, what a shame. That's mine. Peter. Yeah. There's a section that we've been doing for the past couple of weeks without you. Yeah. All right. Um, it's in a running order. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it it's, is. it's new, uh, but hopefully, you should sort of get into the swing of things once we get started. Okay. Apparently, it's called What We Pl Play In. Mm, mm hmm. <laughs> It's time for what we play in. Peter. Yeah. What you been playing? Oh, I've been playing a game since you saw me last. Mm. Spent a lot of that time just in bed uh, feeling sorry for myself. But mm. the time that I've spent out of bed playing video games, mm -hmm. I've been playing Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Nice. What do you think? I think it's good. I, uh, in some ways, I wish that they'd kind of just, you know... I like the polish to it. Mm. I like how it looks. I think it looks like way better than it ever has. Um, but I kind of wish that they'd taken all that and just applied it to the original kind of structure of the game. That's what I said. And maybe, yeah, maybe still put like a few little branching paths and a few side quests in there. Maybe like one per level or mm. two per level. Uh, but there's just so much to do. And my head is telling me oh, I want to just get through all the films first and then go back and start like exploring. But the films feel like such an afterthought at yeah, times. Like I agree. Kieran, um, just before I started playing Revenge of the Sith, Kieran had just finished it and he tweeted or said on Slack or something, I heard him saying that, um, oh man, they really, they really rushed through Revenge of the Sith. And I was like, oh man, did they? That's one of my like, well, not favorite films, but it's up there. It's one of the better ones. And um, it's like, it's just three or four boss fights and one non-boss fight level, yeah. like a short mm. non-boss fight level. And it's like, okay, in in all the previous games where the, like the first six films have been adapted, they managed to get like six levels per film 
like fully functioning levels with combat and exploration and puzzles mm -hmm. and stuff. You hardly do any actual building of Lego as well, which is weird. Like there used to be loads of that in the originals. So I don't dislike it. It's not a bad game. But when you're comparing it to like what they've already done, I kind of feel like in some ways it's like lacking some of the simplicity, like some of the some of yeah. the charm of the originals. Um, there's just a lot going on in the cutscenes and in the levels uh, in terms of like free roaming and like going off the beaten track. But when you stick to the beaten track, you're just kind of rushing through from like one boss fight to the next. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping the original trilogy, which I'm moving on to next, is going to be a bit more, slightly more focused. But um, uh, or when I say focused, I mean that they have focused on doing a, an interesting actual mm. story campaign rather than, uh, yeah, rushing through it again. But probably not. <laughs> um. I played a little bit of it yeah. uh, the other week. Only, only the very, very start. And I honestly don't know if I'll ever go back to it. But mm. I don't... Did you play the first game, the first movie? Yes. It's the weakest one. Of them. Okay, well, that's... That it's one not sucks. not necessarily my, my problem with the, with the content. It's the structure in that... Mm. I yeah. know I haven't played a Lego game for a while. But I'd, I'd much prefer just a level select hub. I don't. Yeah, I don't like. like I, agree. I don't like running round between. I find it kind of overwhelming, and yeah. it, it sort of pads out a bit and ruins the the flow. Yeah. I'd much rather just go, like the what is it, the cantina from the, yeah mm. from the original one. You just walk through a door and then you start that whole chain of of, mm. of levels. Whereas as it currently stands, you sort of wander around in various hub areas, like and there's and loads of like things pulling you in a million different directions and well, i just i just want to play the story yeah. missions and the story missions are so like rubbish like, they're so just like over it. random and short like they'll be like ride your little races along this thing you that's a level you've done it congrats yeah. and then you're like what about the story yeah i got like a little cut scene i'm just meandering around coruscant for like 20 minutes mm. doing all the kyber brick stuff and then it's like yeah here's a, t a 10 minute level yeah and then off you pop go and get all those bricks again go on go on and go they on. skip over stuff that would have made a decent level as well like i can't really think of an example now but there have been a couple of times where i've like sat and watched a cutscene, thinking like oh i know what the next level is going to be but then that entire sequence from the film plays out in 15 seconds in a bridge cutscene. i'm like oh i was so really play that bit. disappointed that i didn't get to do the like Prince, uh, the Queen Amidala, like breaking back into the palace, like mm. level that you got to do in the original. I really liked that level. Yeah. And then when it was like, and the and Queen Amidala has made it back to the palace. I was yeah. like, huh? What? What? Well, I wanted to play as Queen Amidala. Yeah. Yeah. Because each each movie's got like five levels, and like that's and the levels are like really random. Like how in the first movie, it's like the big fish is the first level that you do like being chased by the big fish under the water from mm. um what's the underwater place in the from Otagunga. yeah yeah and you're not also you you're on the trade you federation the trade ship at the start as well yeah, yeah. is that a, is that a level though I don't yeah know. I, don't know. I think i think so that's the other thing as well there's like some weird kind of because you only know if between... it's a level if you've got the like true jedi thing at the top yeah mm. that's true and sometimes, sometimes you're there like, isn't one of those is this a level and then they get into they like oh no this is the level and it's like the pod racing pod racing makes sense to be a level mm. but then like other things you're like am i some of them are actually just hub level? areas like like when, when you got when i got to otto gunga i was like oh i'm gonna probably have to like explore and maybe mm. like do, do some puzzles like open doors and mm. like get to the bosses and stuff uh, maybe free Jar Jar. That's what you had to do in the, mm. the PS1 version of the game. Um, but no, that's technically a hub area. Yeah. And all you're doing is walking from the door to Boss Nass. And then he says, off you go into the into the bongo. And then you walk from there two. to the, the level. Yeah. yeah. These these words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> off you go <laughs> into the bongo. Sense. Into the bongo. Boss Nass said it's my turn in the bongo. <laughs> yeah. We have an Otto Gunga at home in the freezer. Uh, Ashton, what have you been playing? I have been playing um, some... I've been in a bit of a weird mood this week still. So I've been playing some um, Half-Life Alex 2 in Gmod. We played it co-op. Half-Life Alex 2? No, sorry. Half-Life 2. I didn't write the word Alex. I just added it in. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't even yeah. process the word Alex. Half, That's so exciting. Half -Life Half -Life two, sorry. Half-Life 2 on Gmod. We've been playing it in co-op. So um, we've been going through the story. It's the first time I've played through Half-Life 2. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite nice. I think I wouldn't have played it if I was on my own. I've, now I've played some of it, I would definitely have played it on my own. Mm. But I think it just took 
and me being like, do you want to play this with me? <laughs> and I was like, yes, cool. Um, so I played some of that and then I didn't play anything for like four days. And then uh, last night, no, the night before, I played Team Sonic Racing. Man, that sucks. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> it's just, I swear we had a conversation about this a little while ago. It's, like, like, it's all right. It's, it's all right, good fun. but it's just so... You play it for like 10 minutes, you do one like race and you're like, okay, good. Well, we've done that now. Mm. Let's not play I that did again. play through the in- every single race the, the, or the, every single track the, the game had to offer in one sitting. Yeah. And then with the, the, also, the, the currency I accrued was able to unlock every single yeah. maximum upgrade for my chosen car. It doesn't even like, um, it doesn't even have that many races because they have like all the Grand Prix, mm. but they reuse maps in other like Grand Prix. So there's only maybe like 12 maps, but they're all just naughty. like different ordered That's in the naughty, Grand Prix. Isn't it? Rubbish. And I only noticed that for the first time, like when we were playing it this week, I was like, this map's in the other Grand Prix. Why is it? <laughs> What's happening? Um, so I played that. And then last night we played a little bit of Mario versus Rabbids um, on the oh, Switch. Yeah. Um, MB really likes that game. But he's played like some of it, but he's not played that much. So we only had like two co-op levels unlocked. So we just did those two co-op le- levels like twice. And then we were like, well, that was fun. <laughs> uh, guess we'll just go to bed now. Um, but yeah, we played those. There's just, no, there's no games we can play together. Like if we're sat on the sofa next to each other, it's like mm, really hard. Yeah. But you can play obviously the odd co-op game. And, and we all know how few and far between a couch co-op game is. Um but we left Lego Star Wars at his house so we couldn't play Lego Star Wars. We'll probably play that all weekend. Um, but yeah, there's just not that many games to play that we we have. So it's kind of it's kind of annoying that we have to play things like Team Sonic Racing, which I installed and then we played and then I have now uninstalled from my PlayStation Ooh. again. Ooh. It's just boring. Like it's just and none of the power ups make sense. So no, like, to be fair, they what don't. What is make white sense. blob? What is purple blob? Sometimes yeah. purple blob does like a bomb, and sometimes purple blob does like not. I don't even know what other purple. It just like it does like a boost or something. And I'm like, why is this not? Why is purple blob suddenly boost? I don't know. Does it make sense? I don't know. Why is suddenly boost? <laughs> why is why purple to be blob boost? suddenly boost? I have not been back to that game since I. No. played the whole thing in one sitting uh, I think my friends and I were planning on playing some online but it just never happened yeah. they're all playing worms now worms they're all playing worms Are they? yeah yeah Bloody worms. I haven't had a chance to join them yet but they're they're worm heads now mm. wow lost to the worms <laughs> I, I still like worms but I've not played in a long time mm. yeah I'd play worms anytime mm. we should play worms one day we should on play worms. Um, yeah we probably should stream. Shouldn't we? yeah yeah, yeah. That was always fun that's all I've played this week. Okay. Well, actually, that's not completely true. I, but you're probably going to talk about what else yeah, we right. played. So, so I'll let you talk about it. I played a little bit of Jackbox over the weekend. Mm-hmm. I had some people around, played some games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jackbox Murder Trivia Party was one of them. And also Gespionage, which is a deceptively very good and underrated I had never played game. Gespionage before. Gespionage is great. It's really good. I feel like I played it once, but I don't remember which one it is. So you, uh, it's it's sort of... It's like a stats one. Yeah, you're, you're, the, the pretense is that the, the government spies on what everyone is doing. Right. And so they give you various topics and you take it in turn to uh, select the percentage of people that do or don't do a certain thing right. out of people that they've polled. Mm. And then everyone else has to guess if it's higher or lower. Right. And you get more points based on how close you I'm are not, to it. It's really good. It's a great one. It's in yeah. Party Pack 3. I recommend it a lot. Super easy uh, to understand and very accessible. It's good stuff. Mm. I like it. Uh, also played uh, Switch Sports. For, for, totally forgot about that. We oh, did yeah. uh, we did the, the Quipscope on it last week. Mm-hmm. Uh after we recorded the podcast, which is why we didn't talk about it on the podcast. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, it's fine, but bowling is kind of the standout. It's the I only think. one that I think I would have any interest in playing Yeah. again. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a great addition to a roster of party games that you have prepared for when people come over mm. or you go visit other people. Yeah. But it's not. On its own, you couldn't spend an evening playing Switch Sports, I don't think. No. It's just, there's just not enough in there. No. Um, and it's not good enough for that. But bowling, you know, everyone loves bowling. Everyone loves bowling. It's so not that's as fun. good as Wii Bowling, though. It's not as good as Wii Bowling because that was just, that had a mind of its own. Yeah. With that Wiimote. You never knew what it was going to do. Yeah. Could, could go anywhere. Uh, so I played that. I have also 
started replaying I Saw Black Clouds, which I think is maybe one of the worst Wales interactive games I've ever played. Mm -hmm. um, and they now f follow me on Twitter, which is very exciting. Wow. Really, really exciting time. So yeah, that collab is just around the corner. God, I'm I sure. really want us to be in one. Uh, so do I, more than anything. That's and uh, so I'm going for my platinum run on that. I don't know when I'll have time to play some more, but I'm following a guide to pick all the correct answers. And of course, Elden Ring. I've been playing more Elden We also played another Wells Interactive. Well, we tried to play another mm. Wells Interactive game at the weekend called The Madness of Dr. Decker or something. Yeah, something like that. And we played it for like 10 minutes and we were like, what? is going on it's an earlier wells interactive game oh. it's not one of their best really i think weird. everyone was kind of maybe too drunk to really yeah. get stuck in we were so. not paying attention no no definitely weren't still need to play who pressed mute on uncle marcus which yeah. is i'm sure they're the gold standard for we're wells having interactive we games. like have a group of us that all really want to play it so we need to wait for us everyone to be together to mm. like start playing it and so far, someone has always been missing. So we've waited. But maybe eventually we'll get to play it on your birthday. Your maybe. Birthday might be the day. Yeah. And you, pressed, you might be there too, Peter. Yeah. Who pressed mute on Unky Marky? Who pressed it? Who, Who did, did it? it? We, I don't know. We'll find out. I suppose we will. That's all I've played. Well, I think it's time for question two. Mm. Okay. This comes from Nikki P. Hello, Bap. Hello. With all of the plops happening at the moment, do you have a go-to gaming remedy that provide a that can provide a level of plops comfort. A chicken gaming soup for the soul. A gaming acid reflux. Keep up the great work and stay plops free. Thank you, Thank Nikki. You, Thank you, Nikki. Uh, I was confused right at the end there by a gaming acid reflux, because surely that's a bad thing, mm. acid reflux. But I suppose once you've had your acid reflux, your indigestion goes away. So mm. maybe maybe it's Who there's knows? some level of uh, relief. Uh, I... I mean, for me, it's a bit of a boring answer, but to me, it would probably be to go back to something old and nostalgic to make me feel kind of warm and cozy. Mm. Um, typically, I think if I'm not feeling well, I wouldn't want to play video games. I don't like to necessarily be looking at a screen. It depends what's wrong with me, I guess. But uh, if if someone said, okay, you're not well, but you've got to stay in this room now with a console, what are you going to do? Then I think I would just go and play some old PS1 games, you know, mm. play some Crash, play some Spyro. Um, and uh, yeah, just try and forget that I'm a grown up and just just try and pretend that I'm like 10 again. <laughs> just think Mumsy will be in in just a moment with my suit. <laughs> Bring me the cream. Bring me the cream. Get the cream. Bring me to mummy. Um, so yeah, probably something from like the late 90s. I think I would play. Mm. Um, yeah, just to take me back. Take Although, me back. Take, take me. Although you did have plops recently, and the correct answer is no games. No just games. darkness and just, silence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just head under head under blanket. Mm. Um, yeah, that was what I did. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. If if I would, if if someone had a gun to my head while I was feeling ill and said, <laughs> you'd "Choose say, a game," you'd say, "Pull the goddamn trigger." I'd, yeah, I probably would. Uh, but if I wasn't allowed to do that, I would say. Get me a PS1 Spyro. and hook it straight up to my face. Spyro, <laughs> please. Yeah. Ashton? I, yeah, it depends on how bad I'm feeling. Because if I'm, like, bad enough that I can, like, I want to stay in bed. Obviously, I don't want to play anything. But if I'm not as bad and I'm just a bit under the weather and, like, I can, I feel like I can sit at my desk. Like if I'm still able to, like, go to work but I'm feeling, like, rubbish... Probably something really like mind numbing, like mm. a Minecraft or a Stardew Valley or, or something. Probably something in co-op so that I can like play with someone else who can be like, let's go and do this. And I can just let my brain switch off and just yeah. meander around. Or if I'm like ill to the point where I'm just like monging out on the sofa under a blanket and like in a big hoodie or something. Probably whatever's loaded on the PlayStation at the time that doesn't require me to like get up and move and put something in right. that I can just like jump into. Um, like the last time I was un under the weather, I think I just played, just played hours of Horizon. I mm -hmm. think I was I was playing uh, for Zero Dawn at the time when I was last unwell, and I was just like, I'm just gonna sit and just totter around in Zero Dawn and see what happens. So. Probably just whatever's on the PlayStation, so I haven't got to move. Yeah, so don't have to install anything. Don't have mm -hmm. to put any discs yeah. in. Yeah, just, <laughs> just play it and just sit and do nothing. It's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, How yeah. about you, Ben? My most recent example of this would 
come from when I had COVID plops mm. um, like a month and a bit ago because I played a lot of Elden Ring um, when I was when I just like could could barely move. Um, and the first day, the first, I would say, 18 hours, I was just in bed in the dark because everything hurt my eyes. Yeah. And then it my eyes stopped hurting, but I still just felt rubbish and like lethargic and couldn't really move. So I moved my PS5 through to my bedroom and I just played WWE 2K22 <laughs> um, and just like charged through some of the career mode of that. And it turns out that was mindless enough that I could do that relatively easily. And then as I improved, I really got stuck into Elden Ring. And that was so lovely because... It was the first opportunity since it had come out that I was actually able to play it for long stretches mm. of time. Right. Um, and I was really able to just feel like I was making a lot of progress and accomplishing stuff despite not being able to move. As tempting as it would be to say something nostalgic, my nostalgia for certain things, like I played through Final Fantasy VII maybe once every year and a half, two mm. years. Yeah. But it, it it comes around, it doesn't come around when I'm ill, it comes around when when it comes around, basically. Yeah. Um, so I'd be unlikely to get stuck into something, especially when you're not really sure how long you're going to be sick for. Mm. I don't necessarily want to start something that's going to last ages. Uh, but clearly, with my most recent plot, plop experience my plop experience uh i something more meaty and more uh contemporary was just what i needed right. like uh, maybe next time i get uh covid plops too because mm -hmm. everyone's due a second go around yeah uh then i'll finally get horizon and finally uh play forbidden west because that's another one that's on my backlog and i just need time to play it uh it's sad that i have to get really unwell yeah in order to make time to play these games but that's probably what that's probably what I'd I'd say is my answer to that something something new mm. something uh, big. Mm. Well, from something big to something a bit strange, mm. it's time everyone for weird news. Weird news. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. Remember, if you check out our social media channels, that being Twitter and Facebook, there's a post that goes up towards the beginning of the week where we ask for your weird news and you can submit it and it might be featured on this podcast. Mm. We also would like to thank our podcast producers who support us at a certain tier on Patreon. And if you'd like to become a podcast producer and get a shout out at the beginning of weird news, then you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump check it out i kind of miss you forgetting about that every yeah, week. yeah i do peter what's your weird news oh ben oh, you've forgotten about the podcast <laughs> producers. <laughs> uh here's a list of podcast producers thank you to nathan to josh plain to gy goliath to sean leg to Corey duffel to ellie nicholas to erica hutchinson to melody l bonnet to katie jared and to gabrielle philipping thank you podcast producers thank you podcast thank producers you thank you podcast producers one and all people what's your weird news this week i've got a weird news that was sent to us on twitter from samuel benson um Some... just waiting for it to load kotaku it's written by luke plunkett yes Yay. the editor for weird news at kotaku yeah uh, Wario's big speaking role for a British supermarket. What? 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 Housing. Who? Which one? Charles Martinet. Isn't just that it is Martinet, isn't it? Or Martinet, maybe. No, it might be Martinet. Matinee. Matinee. Let's say matinee for Mar the rest of Marinade. <laughs> it looks like the T should be silent, but I feel like I've heard people pronounce it. I think I've heard it both tea. ways yeah. as well. I'm not sure. Charles Matinee isn't just the voice of Mario. He's Wario as well. <gasps> no. What? That's, That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Um, the inhabitants of the Mushroom Kingdom aren't big on speeches. They'll write long-ass letters, sure. But when it comes to speaking out loud, most of them will restrict themselves to the odd soundbite or celebratory quip, except, that is, for Wario. Mm. Well, these days, you'll only hear him say, Wario, or Wah, around the release of... <laughs> Are you sure it's not you that you does the Charles voice? Matinee. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, around the release of WarioWare DIY in 2009, things were different. It's the first game where Wario and his friends would speak in full sentences, which, if you're not used to it, is certainly a thing. Oh. Here is a very unsettling example from WarioWare Gold, in case you need a reminder. Okay. There's an embedded YouTube link. Hello. 
I wonder when he's going to speak. Wah! <laughs> Say something. Okay, he's doing a lot of laughing. Wow, okay. okay. That cool. was a long build-up, but then it certainly delivered when he finally spoke. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would it kill you to use a timestamped link next time, Luke? Yeah, just, maybe. Just yes. an idea. Uh, which leads me to this very niche, but very interesting piece of trivia. Gaming Reinvented have found that it wasn't the game itself that let us hear matinees Wario uh, in full voice for the first time, but an obscure advertisement for the game that ran ahead of its release only in the UK and for one British supermarket, Tesco. Tesco! In particular. Okay. So, <laughs> what makes this interesting, at least for me... Should have done Wazda. ...is that long-time oh. voice actor Charles Ma Martinet's vocal talents are so synonymous with single words or phrases that to hear him belting out several sentences at a time can be jarring and make you wonder whether it's really him. Does he say the word Tesco? Uh, That'd be good. There is a link. every little helps. There is a <laughs> so there's like a whole video embedded here for um where like game what would they call who game re gaming reinvented have like talked about this okay. ad but I don't know at what point in this video oh here we go this might be where it is I know it's just a Photoshop picture of Wario in front of a Tesco. Which is not. That's legit. Uh, it's probably somewhere really in that video there. if you want to hear you think, it. You think Wario went to that Tesco yeah, and took so. that right. photo? Yeah, okay. So, uh, like, hear a single wah and you can go, yep, that's Martinet, all mm -hmm. right. Hear a complete sales pitch. That's who, sorry? Ma matinee. Marinade. Marinade. Yeah. Uh, hear a complete sales pitch, though, where with each successive word, he starts to sound more like a Grand Theft Auto 4 villain and you start to doubt yourself. But it is. Gaming reinvented made sure by reaching out to the man himself who remembers it clearly, replying in an email, Thanks th thanks for the lovely memory. <laughs> yes, that was me. What a fun commercial. From <laughs> for a man who is normally paid by the word and grunt, but who here got to read out entire paragraphs at a mm. time, I bet it was. Beautiful. Um, so it, it'll be in wow. there somewhere in this. How long is this video? Oh, it's only two minutes long. So I can, if maybe if I listen to it quietly while you do your next news, I'll find the bit where sure. hopefully okay. they've actually embedded the Tesco recording. Uh, let me turn it down. So what, my, what you got, Matthews? My news was submitted by Jonathan Mac13, uh, Mr. Morning without the vowels, which is aka Sammy Benson, and Jonathan Wong on Facebook. Mm. So mm. there's a, a triple submit wow. from these lot. Wow. This comes from The Verd, written by Sean Hollister. At Starfire two two five eight apparently on Twitter is cool. Sean's link. Okay. Um, the Fisher Price baby's first gamepad has just been modded to play Elden Ring. Ah. Oh, Pair your Melania 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 sure sure yeah run with such classic kiddie hits as one two three four up goes your score. <laughs> what the <laughs> what? what it says what um. I never thought I'd be writing about my baby's Fisher Price gamepad again, but here we go. A modder has turned the cheap tune-filled toy into a complete Xbox gamepad with everything you need to play Elden Ring. And incredibly, he did so without losing any of the Fisher Price game and learn controllers built in sound effects. Meaning you can now pair that's what you said at the beginning. You can now pair your Melania run with such Classic kitty hits as one, two, three, four, up goes your score, and orange, purple, white, and pink, green, red, and blue. Woohoo. That's another one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, how annoying. It's the Atari code, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How annoying could it be? Here he is pulling off a million point combo in Tony Hawk's Pro Skate the day we um, the day after we first published this story. I didn't realize it, it read out the buttons. Yeah. That is unbelievable. <laughs> he really is playing it with that controller. Orange, orange, green. Um, none of this will be surprising if you've heard the name Dylan Rudism Beck before. 
No. Heard that name before? No. Wow. Well, no. Also surprising. realized that I just said Atari code instead of Konami code. Oh, but I didn't oh, pick I didn't up pick on that. Up well, I just either. everyone else will have picked up on that. Yeah. So I feel like oh. I'm feeling good. You, said you it can delete your comment now. He's gone yeah, back. Delete it, delete it, delete it's it the please. Konami code. I do know that. Um, because this is this is one of the less ambitious controller stunts in the New Zealand native Oops. and Twitch stream that the New Zealand native yep. and Twitch streamer has pulled off. Um, he's the guy who beats Dark Souls 3 with a single button Morse code controller, built a motion controlled lightsaber and forced power glove for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and rigged up his own flap waddle on honk controls for Untitled Goose Game. Oh, uh, yeah, right. I remember that one. Yeah. I remember that one. We um, covered that. Rudison tells The Verge the new Fisher Price mod is one of his favorite builds, nonetheless, purely due to how clean it looks. After some fiddling, he was able to cram an entire. Arduino Pro micro, micro clone in there, a two axis joystick, since Fisher Price's original joystick was really just a button, and a few micro switches to turn the original clicky but non electric shoulder buttons into real buttons as well. All the original Fisher Price buttons still work though, right down to the Konami code Easter egg. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I think you mean the Atari code. I think you I mean, mean the, the Bandai Namco. Sorry, yeah. yes, the Bandai Namco code, Very good. of course. Um, because he got the Arduino set to piggyback off the inputs by soldering soldering directly to the pre-existing board. So yeah, he's largely playing the games with an actual Fisher-Price gamepad, not just using a Fisher-Price gamepad as a shell. You do, you do have to plug it in though. Not much space for battery, sadly, he says, since the Arduino is taking up all the room. And he like did it, but he couldn't close it because it's so many oh, like, wow. wires and stuff. Um, he said that they had to... How does he get every Xbox button out of these li limited controls, you might ask? Well, you, can, you can't get them all at once, but he did rig up the Fisher-Price slider as a mode selector that, you can let, that, you, that can let you have either a left or right analog stick at any given moment, as well as access to the start, select, and guide buttons on the ABC um, buttons. The bumper can be both bumpers and triggers all on their own. They'll press a different switch depending on whether you rock them left or right. So... Yeah. yeah, that was the hard the the what seems like the hardest bit to use is that mm. it's only got one thumbstick and yeah. there's a little switch on the bottom right that you switch left or right depending on what and that will change whether scheme. that thumbstick is oh doing my a left God. or right yeah. stick. <sighs> and then he finishes it off by saying, "I don't know if I'll build one of these for my with my two year old with my now two year old pad, but it is a joy to see this hunk of plastic and circuitry in the headlines once again." Amazing, so. excellent. I have got Wario's uh, advert ready if you would like to. Oh, we found it. And I did find it, yeah. Um, here we go. Tesco. Oh, they had Tesco. Excellent. I love that. Tesco. I'm so glad he said Tesco. Yeah. I was really worried that he wasn't going to say it. Yeah. Tesco. Tesco. Ben, do you have some weird news? I have some weird news. It's from Nintendo Life. Random. Random. Uh, man rescues abandoned Nintendo dogs becomes viral sensation on TikTok. Oh. Uh, this is by Liam Doolan. And apologies to anyone who sent this in, but I found this myself, mm -hmm. so I didn't didn't go to the posts. We're all probably guilty of neglecting our Nintendo dogs over the years, but have you ever lost your virtual pups? Nintendo Live reader and TikTok user Ben Benny P Video Pollard has become a bit of a viral sensation on the social media platform recently after he apparently found an abandoned Nintendo dogs cartridge on a late night late night train in London. He's published three videos about uh, this story so far and has gained almost half a million views. Assuming it's not a hoax, it documents his totally legitimate discovery of the cartridge, the restoration of it, and meeting the pups, Tyson and Enzo, who are no doubt happy to see a friendly face. Aww. It actually makes me sad to think about the Nintendogs that I left behind when I stopped playing on my DS. So like, there are still Nintendogs sad. somewhere. I have two. One was called Bob, and I can't remember what the other one was called. Mortimer. And I'm really, no, it wasn't called Mortimer. Cratchit. No. <laughs> and that actually makes me sad to Marley. think about them. Yeah. That would work as well, Marley. That's a dog's yeah. name. It is. It and is. me. 
And me. Yeah. As you can see in the video above, which we're not going to watch, the owner of these doggies is is simply named Sean. In an email to Nintendo Life, Pollard described the whole uh, experience as bizarre and said he now had hopes of reuniting the virtual pups with their original owner who potentially just lost the cartridge on a train ride. We hope this can help. Um, I want to know why someone in the year of our Lord 2022 is carrying around a Nintendox cartridge mm. in well, maybe his they, back pocket. Maybe they love en- uh, Tyson and Enzo an awful lot, and they couldn't. Yeah, maybe they you know, they're not to... like you, oh Ashton, God, who just abandons their he pups. Might be really sad that he lost his dog. Well, yeah, yeah of course. Well, that's, the, that's the story. Really. That's hopefully what's going to be you know Aww. fixed here. So. That's that's essentially all of it. It was just a link to all these TikTok videos. But someone's uh, adopted uh, some Nintendogs we'll they found on the train. We'll call it Foster until they find their real home. Okay. Adopt. Yeah. Okay. They've just been uh, being looked after. They're at the kennels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they will be picked up later. I'm Maybe sure. by Sean. Who knows? Wow. Thanks for that. Um, this is from Jules. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. Hey, Bat. Hope you are well. After nearly a two-year wait... Thanks, COVID. My partner and I finally got married. Hope you're married. married. Hope you're married. Congratulations, Jules. Congratulations. Um, All of our ceremony music was taken from some of our favorite video games, including Final Fantasy VII, Oblivion, and Shenmue. If slash when you each get married, what video game music would you pick to complement your day? That is very sweet, you gigantic nerds. Congratulations, (laughs) and I do hope, truly hope that you're married. Um, otherwise, you're living in sin, and uh, we can't really stand for that, can we? No, no it's disgusting. This house of God. Uh, but congratulations. Yeah, um, I am getting married, so <laughs> I mean, the question. <laughs> no is, need to brag, people. All right, but Jesus I, you know, they Christ. say if slash when you get married, what video game music would you pick to complement your day? Yeah, so well, you so are what having did you, music. What did you pick? I think video you game are having music. video game yeah. music. Yeah, it's it's been forced upon me. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think Oblivion's a good a good call, to be honest. The combat Jules. music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fought mob crabs more fearsome than you. You had to capture it yourself in game. It's yeah. got all the lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Oblivion is very beautiful music. It's a wonderful soundtrack, one of my favorites. Um, but I've talked before about just generally, I think Jeremy Sewell does very good stuff. I really liked his first two... The first two Harry Potter films made into games, they were um, scored by him and they are very uh, similarly kind of peaceful and, you know, you can just, I could sit there and listen to that, again, not in combat sequences, just in wandering around the corridors and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he did um, Dungeon Siege, which I mentioned fairly recently on a on a podcast where the deer was in the forest. Mm-hmm. Um, he did... Uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, which is a favorite game of mine, um, which is mostly like horrible combat music. There's not a lot of peaceful music in that game, but probably just, yeah, maybe just kind of a Jeremy Saul back catalog. I'd maybe pay an extortionate amount of money mm. to have him come along with an orchestra. Sounds like you just should marry Jeremy Saul. No, maybe I should, him. actually, yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry, Amy. Sorry, Amy. So I've only got eyes for Jerem- Jeremy. Jeremy. The music just sort of comes out of him all the time. So yeah. you're lying in bed next to him, and it's just. I think he glows. I think. Yeah. He, I think he's bioluminescent. Yeah. And he just sort of. Yeah. There's just a, a bright golden light. Comes constant from him noise music. wherever yeah. he goes. Yeah. He shall have. Maybe he's. He shall have music wherever he goes. He shall have music. He might yeah. be the person on the the cock horse. Yes. From R- Banbury Cross. to Banbury Cross. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the rest of the lyrics if we were going to switch What are you talking them. about? What song's that? Now, you can't, you can't claim Come that on this now. is something you're not old enough to know because yeah. this but is a nursery if... rhyme from about yeah. 17, I, might, I probably do know it, but I don't know. I can't think Ride of it. a cock horse, yeah. which is fine. Ride a cock. Cock. Ride a cock. Ride a cock <laughs> to horse. Banbury Cross. To, you'll see, to see or a you'll fine, see a... a a fine, fine lady, lady upon, upon a white, white horse, horse with oh. rings on her fingers and bells, bells on her toes. She, she shall have, have music wherever, wherever she goes. goes. Okay. And I went to school in Banbury. Thank you. Did you? Yeah. Banbury oh. Cross is, uh, is Banbury is not a great town. Anyone from Banbury can attest. Uh, mm-hmm. But I went to secondary school in Banbury. Did, was, did it, maybe there used to be a big fair at Banbury. Possibly. There's a statue of the white lady, of the oh, of the, the white oh, lady she on she the fine horse. Toes? <laughs> Sorry? Did she have bells on her toes? If the, if they were there, they've long since been robbed. They've been because just it's Banbury. <laughs> yeah. Someone's run off with those. Oh, cool. what a shame. 
Anyway, yeah, Jeremy Saul. So I would him. marry Jeremy Saul yeah. in answer to your question. Which video game composer would you marry, Ashton? Um, is the question being asked. I, I don't have a specific composer. No, no, I'll fine. just uh, a range of composers. Mm. Um, talking about Final Fantasy VII, I would like Barrett singing the Final Fantasy VII theme tune to be played at some point in my wedding. He does it oh, all the time. Oh, that one, the victory. The yeah, victory he does it all the time, and I love it. Okay. Every time he does it, it makes me laugh. I love him. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, and his big arm. Yeah, and his big arm. Big gun arm. Um, but for for realsies, mm. um, I really like Tifa's theme from Final Fantasy VII. Mm. Um, it's I not think... as good as Aerith's theme, though. Well, it's a matter of opinion. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I really like it. Oh. Okay. Well, you're not invited to the wedding. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine then. Or I really like um, from Horizon Forbidden West in kind of like the the opening like credits there's a song called in the flood that's the only one that's got lyrics in it um from uh, the game and i really like that song and i think it's just a really nice song so i would probably have that but I probably won't but if i was gonna have one mm. probably would be that one okay so you never know. I'm not getting married yet, so there's time for me to decide that yeah, actually I will have that. Yeah, yeah. So, or you know, decide Eris that Eris theme. theme is better than Tifa's theme. I can't remember what Eris theme sounds like. Bum bum bum, bum bum bum, bum 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 bum. That one. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it to you when we. Okay. Get, yeah, get I'll to listen it. to it once we get out. But I really like Tifa's theme. Too. Okay, that's fine. It's all right. It's no Eris theme, but you know, it's fine. Do you have any you songs that I can you just tell you you're wrong your wedding? when you say that? Yeah, them? so Aerith's theme the entire time um, yeah. because it's a highly emotional day and just in case I needed reminding, Aerith's theme because, you know, she's the best in that. Um, <laughs> I, d I think it's unlikely that I would have gaming music at my wedding. Yeah, me too. As and when that me also. might take place. However, uh, I want to walk down the aisle to... The music that plays. You uh, want to walk down the aisle. I am going to walk I down think the men aisle. Walk down the aisle too. Yeah, I mean they have to at Get least at somehow. some point. Yeah. At one they point during the ceremony, while people are going. They do. What are they? They don't roll, do they? they oh, mm. run. That'd be yeah. cool. <laughs> Just sprint full face <laughs> yeah. down the aisle. Well, that's it. The men aren't allowed to walk down the aisle as the tradition dictates. So yeah. They have to find some other mode of transportation. Dodge. Some <laughs> churches they just take the entire like back wall out, so you can just walk in from behind the. The altar. Yeah. Just, just so you don't walk down the aisle. Mm. Are they not allowed Forbidden. to walk down the aisle? No. Is that the rules? No, they are, but it's just not. They're just there, aren't they? At the start yeah. of the ceremony, they're already up there. Yeah. They just walk. They just sort of I've never up seen, there at some point. I've never yeah. seen the groom do it. No. But you just look away for a second and he's there. And they're assumed he's already the position. At the, he's already at yeah. the altar. I suppose at weddings with two grooms, you probably have at least one walking down the aisle. Otherwise... That's true. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd just both be there already. Because sometimes the groomsmen walk down the aisle with the bridesmaids. Do they? Do they? I've seen in American weddings do oh, that quite I've well. never done that. Where they, they walk like... They all paired off and then they get to the end uh, of this right, yeah, before the bride comes American down. But I don't yeah. know when the groom would walk down. I've been an usher a couple of times and I've never done that. I've mm. never been in a wedding party. Mm. Ashton. Well, you know, if Eris theme is on the agenda <laughs> potentially for yours, then maybe you could be involved in mine at some point. Ah, it's okay. a bargain. That's a, con <laughs> that's a conditional sure. relationship right there. Okay. Uh, so I want to walk. I want to walk down the aisle. Yes. Yeah. In my beautiful dress mm -hmm. to the music that plays when you drown in Sonic. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then <laughs> when we're leaving the wedding venue and everyone's going, yeah, Yay! congratulations, Yay! the Sniper Two theme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Next stage. What <laughs> lies beyond the shadows or whatever. A man looking for trouble. Uh, then first dance, Megalovania. Yeah. Just like ev 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 uh, just the DJ says, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please. Uh, Mr. Mr. Number Mr. Five. Mr. Mrs. Potter. <laughs> this is Mambo number five. Uh, please, please. All, I don't know what they do at weddings. They say, um, welcome. Uh, Please be, first dance, Please be upstanding for the Mr. first dance. and Mrs. Potter. And then I go to the dance floor with my lovely bride. Mm -hmm. And then it just... Dun, 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 dun. He's wearing a suit. Yeah, because you said we were wearing, I'm wearing a dress. A, well, yeah. we can both wear dresses. It's okay. fine. We can both be pretty. Yeah. And then we just bust out this insane dance routine. He'd to like planned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choreographed But it's like really <laughs> fast. <laughs> every beat <laughs> is a... Every every note is like a new move. Mm. It's, re it's really hard to watch and a blur in a way. 
And there we are. That's really, the music. really hard to do. That's the music I'd have at my wedding. Uh, honestly, though, probably something from Journey or Flower. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, Austin Wintry is a, is a fantastic composer, and both, both those soundtracks are really beautiful. So maybe something from that. If my first plan fails, of course. Mm. Yeah, of course. And that is my plan, my very serious plan. Yeah. So. Hello, wife. Oh, soon to be wife. Wife. Here is my caveats for us getting married. Yeah. Megalovania first I must first walk down dance. the aisle to Sonic Drowning. Yes. I have thought of one uh, more that mm -hmm. maybe any one, of us, any one of us could do. A uh, little spoiler slash hint for the upcoming Worst Games Ever. The bonus theme stage from Worst oh Games Ever. Oh, my God. Oh, the weirdest, weirdest games ever. Oh, it was the weirdest. weirdest. Yeah, so you might have even yeah, wanted to wait Yeah, that was quite horrifying, that's that That's some time away, but Ooh. you'll know when you, when you see it. Yeah. If I wanted to end the wedding, like end the marriage before it's even got going. If you wanted people to leave, if you like the, <laughs> the venue said we song. have to be out by yeah. quarter to midnight, Put it on. Put get on. a DJ to pop that, pop that horrific. on. Horrific. Yeah. Absolutely horrific. It was horrible. Terrible. So you can look forward to that. Yeah. It's time for the big discussion. Big discussion. It's big discussion time, time for the big discussion. This week's big discussion comes courtesy of Cameron Keywood, who says, Hilo Bap. Hilo. Embracer Group has entered into an agreement to acquire Crystal Dynamics, IDOS Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal, as well as a catalogue of IPs, including Tomb Raider and Deus Ex. What are your thoughts and what games would you like to see? Personally, I want to see a Sleeping Dogs 2. All the best, Cameron J. Keywood. I've got some information here. Yeah. A little bit of a write-up. This is from PC Gamer and Jody McGregor, who wrote this. Three of Square Enix's development studios will be acquired by holding company Embracer Group in a $300 million deal, as Embracer has announced in a press release. Phil Rogers, CEO of Square Enix America and Europe, was quoted as saying, Embracer is the best kept secret in gaming, a massive decentralized collection of entrepreneurs whom we are thrilled to become a part of today. The three studios to be acquired are Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal. Crystal Dynamics is currently working on a Tomb Raider game using Unreal Engine 5, while Buzzing. yes, while Eidos Montreal were recently responsible for the surprisingly good Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> All right, Jody. Square Enix Montreal are known for mobile games and created Hitman Go, Lara Croft Go, and Deus Ex Go. With these studios comes control of a catalogue of games including Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Thief, and Legacy of Kane. As the press release notes, the acquisition also includes the continued sales and operations of the studio's uh, more than 50 back catalogue games. Embracer Group was originally known as Nordic Games before acquiring various THQ assets, uh, assets sorry, when the publisher went bankrupt and rebranding itself as THQ Nordic AB. Oh. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was really confused about who Embracer Group were, and I was trying to figure. They're out. everyone. Yeah. They are like, everyone. What is now. Your Embracer Group too? Did <gasps> you know that? Yeah. Um, after acquiring Koch Media and Deep Silver, followed by Coffee Stain and several others, it rebranded again as Embracer Group in 2019. It's been on an acquisition spree since then, snapping up Saber Interactive, Gearbox, Aspire, Aspire Media, I think, 3D Realms, Ghost Ship Games, Slipgate Ironworks, Perfect World and its MMO developing arm Cryptic Studios, Beamdog and Dark Horse Media, among others. Final paragraph. Square Enix put out its own press release about the deal, noting that its remaining overseas studios will continue to publish any future games in the Just Cause, Outriders, and Life is Strange series. It also said that this transaction enables the launch of a new business by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, AI, oh. and the cloud. Do you know what? Blockchain blo the word blockchain really annoys me. It's a trigger word, isn't it? Yeah. I don't it's just, there's nothing it good about it. And I don't understand how <laughs> you can just make something up and then everyone has to just know what that word is now. Do you These wanna, do you bloody one? NFT boys made up a word blockchain and now we all have to deal with the word and everyone keeps saying the word it doesn't make any sense what's a blockchain how can you be on a blockchain it's not real you can't just make things up the economy isn't real but blockchain is even less real than the economy ashton would you like to make up a word right now that we all have to deal with yeah give me a minute to think about okay it. that's okay. fine peter what do you make of all this uh i mean it's more acquisitions isn't it and it, it i mean as much as it, it's not like Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo acquiring uh, a, a huge company. Yeah. But, I mean, THQ, THQ Nordic slash Embracer are getting bigger and bigger now, aren't they? They're just snaffling they up. Yeah. Sorry, you look like you had it. No, I was, just, it I was rejoining the conversation okay. because I thought and my word. Also, it's not quite as bad because... It's it's not like Embracer buying all of Square Enix either, which no. is what we've been dealing with recently. True, it's just yeah, like, like a full handful of studios. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, they're getting bigger and bigger. They are. And they don't seem to be doing a great... Well, mm, yeah, they 
they don't do what we want them to do with the stuff that they acquire. They've also not really made any good games. No. I know some people will die for Destroy All Humans, yeah. but they've not really, they've not had any critical hits no. so far. Um, so, I mean, on paper, if someone just said to me, uh, these IPs have been acquired by a new party, I'd be like, oh, okay, <laughs> something might happen with them. Then if someone said to me, it's Embracer, I'd be right. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I I mean, I'm not a huge fan of, like, contemporary Square Enix games. There just aren't that many that I've got into. I did like Guardians of the Galaxy to an extent. Um, and I can appreciate Tomb Raider for what it is. But I kind of missed the first one. And I just need to catch up if I want to play, you know, the the, the next ones. Um, but I do really like Thief. Uh, I do really like Soul Reaver, uh, which is part of the Legacy of Kane franchise. Uh, and... Uh, I did a little tweet about this at the time. I believe, mm. I believe that Crystal Dynamics slash IDOS are still the current rights holders of the Unholy War. Oh my goodness. So there's a chance. <laughs> the now. buck, it has been passed. It has been passed. And uh, I mean, I so I tweeted about it like to Lord Brotovich because he's the person who talks about it in my chat uh, on streams. And I said, oh, you know, they're obviously not going to do anything with it. But technically speaking, that has now changed hands, probably. Um, and he said, well, he made the very good point. He said, well, what THQ Nordic do is buy up a load of IP. And then they they do stuff with the bits that no one wants. Like, dis well, some people did want Destroy All Humans. Uh, but, you know, we certainly weren't interested in Destroy All Humans Bob or SpongeBob. Hide yeah. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Exactly. Just, so yeah. Lord Brotherhood <laughs> makes the good point that Probably the most likely uh, remake we're going to see is the Unholy War. It's true. It could happen. It's it's a, six people want it. Get it. It's fast a dead track cert it. now. Uh, no, that's not going to happen at all. But um, yeah, this could be worse. We've seen quote unquote worse, or certainly bigger, more industry shattering acquisitions recently. And yeah, it's not one of those. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do anything with like any of these. Uh, any of the sort of legacy IP. Mm. Um, clearly, they're going to carry on with the likes of Tomb Raider and so on. But yeah, will they will they make more Marvel related games? Yeah. Maybe or you know? it's a as long bargain as like price as well. Guardians mm. of the Galaxy and not like Avengers. Well, well yeah. that's that's it. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's a it seems to be a really affordable price. Is why I say affordable. Three hundred million dollars is not affordable. But again, yeah. when compared to some of the stuff we've seen recently. Mm. Feels like not a lot for some pretty big studios there. Obviously, Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal being the, the bigger of the of the three. Mm. But yeah, talking about um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Are you okay? Oh. Yeah, sorry, my, ow, my um, calf just cramped up. Oh my God. God. <laughs> okay, take a minute. Take Ooh, a minute. I'm good. Uh, yeah, so Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Bearing in mind that Square Enix... It seems in every single financial call that they've had in the, in the past decade, whenever they talk about a Western developed game of theirs, it's it underperformed. Mm. Didn't mm. It didn't meet sales expectations. And everyone always says it sold over two million copies. What what were your and expectations? Really like this it. is crazy. Yeah. And then when you consider that um, Embracer slash THQ Nordic hasn't really had any games that have been critical or commercial smashes. They would lose their minds, I assume, for for sales figures of that kind. But then, do they have the budget to, you know, fund a game like that, mm. which might end up costing about as much as they paid for the studios? Yeah. Uh, I I certainly hope they'll make another one, but it's it just seems crazy, like the 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 money that they paid versus the caliber and cost of project that those studios would normally be working on. Yeah, yeah. seems a bit at odds. And the the like the brand power of things like Tomb Raider. Mm. Like I'm not suggesting that Tomb Raider alone should make it worth more than 300 million, but you know that, that's a huge naming. It gaming. is, mm -hmm. and Deus Ex is a fairly. What's know, happening significant... at Square Enix is the next question. Like, what? Why have they sold this? Yeah. All they seem to do, as I said, is complain about their Western yeah. studios. But maybe they just want to focus on their their JRPGs. Their weird JRPGs. Entirely possible. Yeah. All these spin-offs for Final Fantasy VII Remake without yeah. making part two. More um, Kingdom Hearts. Next Kingdom More Hearts, Kingdom Hearts yeah, that they'll be say. working on for eight years. They they gave up um, 
Hitman, obviously, mm. to uh, to to IO, and they, they didn't even they just let them leave with it. Yeah, you know, mm. they didn't shut the studio down. They just yeah, just be independent. And here is your biggest IP, and they've turned it into one of the consistently one of the best games in every year that it's released in. Yeah. Mm. I don't really understand the business logic of this, and it does, especially for again, seemingly quite a low price tag, it makes you question the wisdom potentially of mm. this, or if there's perhaps a more worrying reason for this. Are they preparing for a takeover of some kind? Who knows? Uh, but it just seems a bit mad, doesn't it? What They're do you just think? like throwing off all of their like gold. Yeah, as, as someone comes on the. Like, I don't know. Oh, like as Microsoft, like. Come to me, Square Enix. Yeah, why like, would go, they, why go, would, why would they do that? It doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> any way I slice it, it doesn't really make any sense. I'm not yeah. sure why they would do this. Uh, but what do you think, Ashton? Um, I've come up with a word. Okay. Um, it's squoogle. 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 Can you spell it for me, please? S Q U. Yeah. yeah. Squoogle. It's your word. <laughs> o. Yes. Mm. D G oh. L E Squoogle. Squadgel. Squoogle. I guess Q U O could be squoo. Yeah? That I means your word. Yeah. Squoogle. Squoogle. And what it means yeah. um when someone says a word that you don't understand, it's the feeling of that. I've oh. got major like squoogle. Squoogle. Right now. I feel real i I've got major squoogle right now. Mm. Okay. And then you could be like, uh, excuse me, that's a squoogle. If they say the word blockchain. And that's that's a squoogle. Don't squoogle me. So are you going Don't to me. are you going to remember this? No. Long no. enough for it to become a thing. No. Because I'm going to forget. But if we keep if you keep reminding us, there's a good chance that it will just become part of our dialect. Our lexicon. Yeah. Yeah. The, I think the audience will remember squoogle. Yeah. And then they'll bring it up, and we'll we'll be like, I'll be like, what, what the hell is that? What's what that is that? Mix of what? What's a squad? Squoogle. What's squad? What's squad goal? What is that? Squad <laughs> goals. <laughs> Why have you spot squad goals so badly? Squidgel. Talk to me about this, this Ashton. Um, so I don't really have that many um, opinions about this. Mm. I am a bit, quite a lot less informed about this takeover and care a bit less about this takeover than I did the last bunch that we've talked mm. about. Mm. Um, but I'm already excited for a new Tomb Raider game. So as long as that comes out and it's good, um happy um i don't really understand what embracer group's vibe is i don't really get what they're doing they seem to own i would say too many studios they're a massive yeah. decentralized collection of entrepreneurs decentralized to me sounds a bit of a squoogle um, <laughs> <laughs> <'cause>, okay <laughs> it's got that squoogle energy yeah because i whenever someone says the word decentralized to me that's like you're doing a crime <laughs> <laughs> oh what like if someone says there's like a decentralized funds, to me that's right. Like so they're not like doing money a, laundering. Yeah, like money laundering. You're doing a crime. So so this squoogle in this sense, yeah. it means that they don't they don't work out of like the same. They sort of just spread everywhere. Right. They, don't, they don't work out of the same place necessarily. Okay. Like there's not an embracer group. There may well be an embracer group building, mm. but the. Let me again get the excellent wording here. The massive decentralized collection of entrepreneurs whom we are thrilled to become a part of today. It kind of sounds like communism. Sure. Like it's our studio, <laughs> comrade. Like you know what? Every, there's like a lot of people. Listen, I don't get it, but it's up to Phil fine. Rogers, CEO of Square Enix America and Europe, to clarify further. If you want to say that it's a communistic squoogel, then <laughs> then that's what it is. He seems happy, so. Yeah, he's probably made uh, loads he's of money. millions and yeah. millions of dollars off yeah. that. Um, yeah, so. But yeah, I'm excited for a new Tomb Raider game to answer the question. Mm. And uh, I would quite like a remaster slash remake of the original Deus Ex, if that's on the cards. Mm. Okay. Because um, I've watched MB play it, and I'm like, this looks interesting. But also it came out when I was two. So uh, that kind of puts me off. Um, cause <laughs> it's aged a bit, isn't it? Yeah, it's aged mm. a bit. Um Almost as much as I have. So it's, yeah, I'd like a remake if that's on the cards, Embracer Group, comrade, um, yeah. if that's mm -hmm. available. Um, but yeah, for me, I I don't really have that many opinions about it. I There's not many IPs in the, in the list that I'm kind of like, no, my favorite IP, do something good with it. So mm. I don't really mind as long as they you know produce some good games and we get some nice games that don't involve lots of crunching from smaller studios i'm i'm good 
I so, uh, I think I said in a podcast a few months ago that I think it'd be quite nice to see some Tomb Raider anniversary style remakes yeah. of like maybe the first three or four games. Because like that's the, what I kind of thought we were going to get and then we didn't get anything. Yeah, because they, they've aged terribly. Yeah. Um, both controls wise and, and graphics wise. I think if you played them originally, you can still enjoy them. But if any new player went and tried to play a Tomb Raider a PS1 game now, they would really struggle. But Tomb Raider Anniversary, I've extolled the virtues of in the past, which was when that game was like, I don't know, 10 years old or something, they did a PS2 version mm. and they rebuilt it from the ground up. So it wasn't all just made out of cubes. It was like actual scenery and stuff. But it was the same story effectively. It had all the dinosaurs and characters and things in mm. it so something like that for the first few games i'd be well up for yeah mm. i'd be very interested to see what happens with marvel's avengers as well mm. in regards to crystal dynamics mm. um that's a good point actually purely in the sense that that thing has got to be a real money sink yeah who plays that i don't know anyone well who plays that some game. people do play it but the fact that they are still working on it is square enix gonna uphold some kind of contractual obligation to Disney or to Marvel or to Crystal Dynamics and continue to fund production on that game or will all responsibilities move over to Embracer Group? Will Embracer Group have the funds to see it through or even be interested in them continuing it at all? Mm -hmm. Who well, knows? This is also the thing is that obviously Square Enix had um, the Marvel, like, uh, what's it called? Like the license. The license, yes, thank you. Yeah. Mm. Um, and they are now making a Kingdom Hearts game, which is heavily implied will involve all the Marvel and potentially Star Wars characters from Disney. Mm. So are they now going to like split their license and be like, you can keep making your Kingdom Hearts game with Marvel characters, but also this new group now has a bunch of games that are Marvel and Marvel IPs. Does that mean that like they're not going to have the license to make any more. It's very true. Yeah, or are they going to well... give them the license as well? And yeah, I mean, there's at least it, it. it appears, well, it not appears, it's that clearly there's no exclusivity on the Marvel license because we've got, um, like Insomniac, for example, mm. also making Marvel games. Yeah. So I guess, you know, anyone who wants it and seemingly deserves it in the yeah. eyes of Marvel or Disney um, is able to get it. So I yeah. really, that's the one thing to add of this that i really want I, I really enjoyed sleeping dogs and a lot of people have said oh my god we might get more sleeping dogs mm. and i would love to play that because i i really enjoyed it on ps3 and platinum did there i uh, didn't play the re-release on ps4 but if they made another one i'd be very interested however guardians of the galaxy is the one i'd be i'd be most interested in seeing uh -huh. a sequel to and yeah for all the points i've already raised i don't know if it'll happen especially yeah if, they, if they're not going to give them the marvel license to do it yeah square enix may again, have some contractual agreement with Disney to develop further Guardians games. And now they sold the studio that made the first one. Yeah. So what would they do then? Would mm. they just not, would we just not get a sequel or would they get mm. someone else to do it? Just done in a different way. Like yeah. Built again. I yeah. have no idea. I have no idea. There, there's also, I wanted to bring up quickly, Crystal Dynamics, uh, it was reported recently that they were helping out, I think it's the Coalition who are working on the uh, Perfect Dark reboot for oh, Xbox. Yeah. And Crystal Dynamics were, were, were announced to be working with them and assisting on that. Apparently they are still going to be helping with that despite being sold. Right. Um, so... That's another thing. This they've got. It, there's there's a lot of um, what am I what am I trying to say here? The the roots run deep and they're complicated in that they're 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 quite tangled mm. uh, with a number of different companies, uh, especially when they're doing a live service game. So God knows what's going to happen with all that stuff. Um, Do embrace a group own Knights of the Old Republic because isn't that Aspire? Is Knights of the Old Republic? I think it might have been actually. Do, do they own? Because that I'm trying to think of like what games that we currently have that are under their umbrella, and I don't know if the remake is under their umbrella, but I know that Aspire have like it, that's one of theirs. I'm not yeah. sure, and they're under the umbrella. But it's a question of like who owns because sometimes because it has has the is the remake being done by someone else, but Aspire have like the original. Well, like typically. As a as a general rule, you'd expect the rights to be held by the pub, a publisher mm. rather than a student, like a development studio. That's and true. I would suspect in that case that maybe Lucas, what they call now Lucasfilm I'm Games, gonna, I'm going to look it up. Like still 
still own that. I'm not sure. I don't really know what uh, whether the license is still with like whoever was involved first time round or yeah. it's just kind of reverted um, to Lucasfilm. Oh, I just say I'm going to look. Oh, look, see what's. Additionally, Square Enix's press release doesn't fill me with a huge amount of confidence. They've just sold three of their, or at least two of their biggest Western studios, and they said, "Yeah, you know, we're gonna uh, we're gonna work on blockchain and stuff." And it's like, what? Are you, what are you talking about? Oh. Don't so, me. yeah, so <laughs> AI and cloud services are obviously going to be important as time goes by. Mm. But the mention of blockchain, especially first in it that list aspire. of things, yeah. it is Aspire. Mm. Okay. Right. It's a little bit concerning. I really don't know what's going on at Square Enix, genuinely. They, they make great games, but they so often don't make great games as well. And it's just so hit and miss. And then they're mm. selling off the studios that perhaps, uh, perhaps sorry, make games that connect best with a Western audience. Mm. Obviously, their JRPGs have a huge following. Like, do some of the biggest JRPGs in the world come out of Square Enix? Obviously. But it seems that they, they're, they're selling off chunks of their business that focus on a market that penetrates deeper in yeah. the West than their JRPGs do. Yeah, it seems like they're yeah. now only going to be able to I mean, broadly speaking, only going to be able to sell games to like Eastern gamers now. Yeah. And also I think that they've sold off their like, their kind of, uh, not the word range, what I'm trying, they're like diversity of their mm. like, you know, content is that you've got all the ones that we seemingly have just sold off are kind of like their divert, their like steps into new things. Mm. Like they don't look like all their other games, whereas a lot of Screenixes. Um, JRPGs and other games look very similar. Like you can yeah. tell a Square Enix game, but then obviously you've got these other games that are like, oh, I didn't know that was Square Enix. Yeah, and now yeah. it's now it's not anymore. No. I guess obviously like Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts still have a big Western appeal, but mm. yeah, if I mean clearly they're just going to be focusing more and more on the JRPGs in terms of the resources they used to put on on the Western stuff is is now going to like spin towards slightly more JRPG territory, and yeah. You do wonder if they're just going to have like less of the pie now. Yeah, yeah, they're just sort of giving it up willingly and yeah. seemingly not for a huge amount of money. Uh, they've still got Just Cause, Outriders, and Life is Strange, obviously, and yeah. those, those studios do still exist. But if they sold these ones, the ones with the with the Marvel license, two with Marvel licenses, and and one that makes Tomb Raider, mm. and gave up the, the IPs for those as well, yeah. how long does Life is Strange have before that's sold? And I've got rid of Hitman. Yeah, yeah, Hitman's before. gone as well. So, it's yeah, just, they are really just I don't know, getting rid of all their Western appeal. Don't videos. really yeah. know whether, yeah, is it, again, is it in preparation for something like mm. a takeover or bankruptcy? I don't, genuinely don't know, but it, I can't make heads or tails of it. Yeah. Uh, as long as these games continue to be made and uh, Embracer Group, to me at least, has yet to prove itself as a valuable entity in any regard, mm -hmm. then that's fine. But the proof will be in the pudding. And the pudding in this case is football, as Alan Partridge once right. famously said. Uh, so, I don't know. You guys got anything else to say? Uh, where's Time Splitters? When's that Where is out? Time Where Splitters? Is it? Bring it Give to it us. to us yeah. now. Here's SpongeBob 2. No, no Embracer, please. you are not listening to us at all. You're not. Thank you so much <laughs> for you for listening, though, and slash mm -hmm. watching to this video slash audio podcast. We really appreciate it. Uh, there's all sorts of ways that you can get in touch with us and let us know what you thought about the various things we talked about this week. Uh, they're preparing to do the Cultaholic podcast soon, you can tell, because they're all just shouting in the they're office. Outside. They're just it's making loads of bloody boys. noise. Uh, Peter, mm. where can people go? YouTube.com and Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump is where all of our videos and streams happen. When we're streaming on both of those, uh, we are modded by Lob Rotovich, Trowling Badger, and Mr. Black. Mr. Thank Black. you very much, mods. If you've got Amazon Prime, part of the whole bundle there is you get a Twitch sub at no extra cost. It's just part of the regular cost. So spend that on us if you like. That'd be really handy. Thank you. Twitter.com and Facebook.com forward slash Team Triple Jump is our social media presence for uh, video and live stream announcements and legacy video content. And perhaps some actual live stuff on Facebook, either, you know, like the Q&A stuff we used to do, or if not that, we'll probably be rolling some like some videos on there as a live stream. So yeah. uh, there will actually be some live Facebook stuff coming soon. I've been saying it for months and months, but now it is actually happening. <laughs> uh, thank you, Fraser, for looking after Twitter and Facebook for us. Also, TikTok.com forward slash at Team Triple Jump. Thank you, Fraser and Ashton for looking after that. Um, you're you welcome and, peter thank you for saying i'm welcome <laughs> uh you can go to tiktok and have a look at us there uh, and finally from me patreon.com forward slash team triple jump there's loads of tiers available to support us and get rewards in exchange so it's yeah. a symbiotic relationship
We're doing a hand gesture. If you're not if you're watching listening. on, yeah, a hand gesture. A good one, not one of the bad ones. Although it's, it's getting worse. Sounds bad, doesn't it? Yeah. We have a website. It's triple j dot map, triple j u dot m p. It's spelled jump, would you believe? <gasps> if you want to join our Discord, it's triple j dot map forward slash Discord. On Discord, we're modded by Jack, Joe, Tori, and Hollow Eyes. Another day to do something. Bloody well do it. If you want to listen to the podcast in its audio forms, why not go to triple jerk dot map forward slash podcast? Maybe you're going to watch a movie you don't really want to see and you want to listen to something else while you're watching it. Oh, pop your headphones in and listen to the podcast in its audio forms. Do. Well, I was well, going to do that in the week. <laughs> I was going to do last week. What, listen to a podcast in the cinema? <laughs> yeah, because we we wanted to, we wanted went to see The Room, which oh, was yeah. amazing. It was brilliant night. Amazing. But were but, you concerned it was good? You were just going to mm. be... No, it wasn't that. It was because the condition of seeing The Room was that you had to sit through an hour and a half Oh, of, the, a, of another film, film beforehand yeah. and yeah. I was really concerned that like A, I'm not a huge fan of horror and B, this is going to be terrible mm. It was terrible but in the best In a very way. entertaining way So I've heard uh, But yeah. I was considering putting my headphones in just listening right. to a podcast yeah. If you want to watch some of our, all of our live stream VODs why not go to triplejet.map forward slash VODs to check out the live streams and last but not least if you want to buy some sick and cool merch why not go to triplejumpshop.com You've missed the cat t-shirt You missed it now Sorry Idiot. about that should have bought it, shouldn't you, moron? <laughs> it's your oh fault God. if bad things happen to cats. You're it so is. Mean. It is. Yeah. No, I am. Um, we might have some new merch coming out soon, so why not go to Triple Jump Shop? I'm at Triple Jump Shop on Twitter. Yeah. There will also be another thing that Ben's going to tell you about in just a minute. That from next week, I'll probably be telling you about as well. Yeah. So I'll let Ben mention that in a minute. Next yeah. I will. Uh, Instagram. Why not follow Peter and Ashton on Instagram and Twitter? At that Peter Austin and at Scrambled Ashton and myself just on Twitter at Confused underscore Dude. We do lists every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday being the joint stream on YouTube. Don't lays it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday being the solo streams on Twitch. <laughs> Worst games ever is fortnightly Friday for patrons of a certain tier, Sunday for everyone else. Uh, it's not a Worst Games Ever week this week, but it will be next no. week. The podcast is every Saturday and we do shows all the bloody time, so come check them out. Why not leave a five-star review on iTunes or your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. Facebook, we did it. We did it. 10,000. Thank you so much. As Peter said, please keep an eye out for the videos and live streams going up on there. Help us push up that watch time as and when you can. And uh, excitingly, very soon, in fact, we're all signed up and hopefully we've been told by the time this podcast goes out, it should be sorted. Mm. Tripleju.mp forward slash cameo. That's C-A-M-E-O. If you're unfamiliar with cameo, it's where you can request uh, personalized video messages from your favorite people. And we're all signed up on there. Peter, Ashton, Me. James, Jenkins, James. and myself will all be up there. And if you go to triple J, you, do, you can search for us on Cameo and find us. But if you uh, go to triple J dot mup forward slash Cameo, you'll be able to find a, a link to all of our profiles. So especially given that the app seems a bit slow and rubbish. Yeah, the app is terrible, mm. quite frankly. Uh, but uh, yeah, do do come check us out. Um, if it's not up yet at the time of release, it will be very soon. Mm. So, uh, But be, we are already on there. So. We are already on there. Yeah. yeah. So that's very exciting. Just enough time to talk about a sponsor yep. yeah. this week. And that is Lara Croft's Tomb Rider. Yeah. Coming soon. It's the kart racer with the woman in it who likes to shoot <laughs> bows and guns at dragons, otherwise known as big dinosaurs. What? <laughs> yes. You heard. You flipping heard me. You did. Dragons confirmed dragons. as big dinosaurs. Yeah. Just big lizards, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to go now. Thanks for watching slash listening, and we'll see you next time. Love you, bye. 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 Also, thank you for buying the cat shirt. We really do Thanks appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>